Hey y'all, welcome to the 31st episode of the Yarn This Podcast. I'm Shama, Jessie's Girl 84 on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find my Yarn This groups on Ravelry and Facebook. If you're one of my first time viewers, thanks so much for giving me a shot. If you're one of my returning Yarnies, thanks a lot for coming back. It means so much. I did the wrong thing here. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, today is Saturday, September 29th. Yes, 2018. I've changed things up all the time that I've been podcasting. I've done my show notes in a notebook. Well, I decided to do them um, in a document, a Google Doc this time. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to start off with talking about my works in progress and uh, we'll go from there. There's quite a bit to talk about today, so let's get into it. So right now, sorry, I'm working on two projects. The main thing I'm working on is the Cherry Blossom Cowl. And this is by Maggie Murphy. Um, it's kind of rolled, but here it is. This is the Cherry Blossom Stitch, I assume, and then it's got this stockinette section and then another section of the um, cherry blossoms and then I'm more probably more than halfway through this stockinette section and then one more section of the cherry blossoms and I'll be done. This is one of the cows that I'm knitting for dad's caregivers. I don't think I talked about this in the last podcast. Well I decided to do scarves or cows for every one of my dad's caregivers. His doctor, um, her, her PA, the chemo nurses and the girl that takes his blood because she does such a good job. Anyway, uh, I was going to do scarves and the girls at Knit Knot suggested that maybe I should do cows because they would take less time and, and they're right. So I've got six to do. I've got one done, one almost done, two definitely picked out patterns and I'll show those to you later. But um, anyway, uh, so this was, I've already finished one and I'll talk about that and uh, another one bites the dust, but this one is knit on size 7 US um, 4.5 millimeter needles and I'm using acrylic yarn to knit these so that they don't have to be specially cared for. They can just throw them in the washer. This one is out of Yarn Bee Soft and Sleek in the purple multicolor way and the girl that I'm knitting this for is one of his, his main chemo nurse. She seems to be the one that takes care of him most often. Her name is Jessica. And um, she's getting married in January and going to Japan for her honeymoon. And she said her only regret is that the cherry blossoms aren't going, going to be blooming at that time. But she told me her favorite color is purple. So that's why I'm doing the cow out of purple. But I'm going to crochet some little cherry blossoms and attach them on... Uh, maybe here, one of the stockinette sections, or maybe on the bottom. I'm not sure where yet, but I think, I think she's going to like it. She's very sweet. And I'll talk more about those later, like I said. The other thing that I'm working on, and it's just right now kind of hit and miss because I, I need to get the cows done, is the new Jemima socks by Kay, uh, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears podcast. Um, and her, she's Briny Bear on uh, Ravelry. She and her husband, if you haven't seen it, uh, have the Bakery Bears podcast, Dan and, and Kay. Um, and they take you to a lot of really cool places. And they went to, um, I knew I was going to forget her name, Beatrix Potter's house uh, this summer. And she was inspired to do a series of sock patterns. So it's a three-month sock club. And I signed up for it. And this is the first one. These are the Jemima socks for Jemima Puddle Duck. Um, and um, uh, I, the others are, I guess, going to also be based on Beatrix Potter characters. So this is all I've gotten done so far. They're top down, which is not my norm, but I definitely do, will do top down. That's how I did it for the longest time. And then here's the pattern. Um, I'm using... Brazen Stitchery Mezzo Sock, which is 80% Superwash Merino and 20% Bamboo. Look at this, y'all. This is amazing, beautiful 
And you can see how it's knitting up. It would be better if I had more knit up, but and it's super soft. But they said it would be fine for socks. So here we go. And I bought this uh, skein of blue, like a tur turquoise type blue, um, for the heel, toe, and cuff. And I don't know what base this is on, but this is also brazen stitchery. And as always, I'm using my 9 inch Chowgu Cirques 1.5 millimeter, 2.5, no, I'm sorry, one, US 1.5. 2.5 millimeter needles um, so it's a very simple pattern and um, but it's but it it's it keeps you from being completely bored and it works well with any any kind of yarn she said self striping variegated um, speckled or solids semi solids whatever you'd like to knit it in so I can't wait to get those done and get started with this next month's. I want to get try to get this done before next month comes up, but I doubt I will because of the cows. But we'll see. Anyway, uh, since I last podcasted, I have finished. Let's see, two, three projects. That's right. So let's start with another one. Bites the dust. My FOs. The first thing I finished, and these have been worn, so they're kind of stretched out. But I couldn't, I couldn't keep them from him because I finished them probably a couple of weeks ago. Are my son's Dragon Ball Z socks. I use the French Vanilla Cappuccino Sock Pattern by CC Almond. Um, I used Lolo Did It Everyday Sock in her Blazing Sevens colorway. And for the contrast heel and cuff, I used Knit Picks Stroll Brights in the Razzleberry and Highlighter Yellow. Okay, so here's, well, I'm going to show you this first. Here's the sock. And the reason for the colors, like I said, it's Dragon Ball Z. These are the colors of Goku's outfit. Um, I was knitting along and he said, would it be too late to, to ch do like a different heel and um, cuff? And I said, no, I was already past the toe. So anyway, so he picked out this, what did I say it was? Razzleberry and then this highlighter yellow. And they're both from Knit Picks in the stroll. Um, and then when I got through... I went and did the turtle symbol in duplicate stitch. Now, we found, um, what do you call them, perler beads. Somebody had done this in perler beads, so it was like having, having it laid out. So my son just drew it out on knitter's graph paper for me, and I just went back in and duplicate stitched. Um, and I used, I was going to use Champagne and Onyx from Sun Valley Fiber MCN Fingering. I got minis for this. But when I started doing the champagne background, it did not look well, look right at all. It was it was taking the black and completely, really, it was almost completely covered up. And uh, we both decided after I pulled it out that it looked better without it and just used the onyx. <clears throat> so here it is. I'm really actually super proud of these. Uh, the the original outline was much bigger. And once he drew it out, it was more of an oval, so he kind of cut it off a little bit for me, and it worked out really, really well. I enjoy doing duplicate stitch, and so I did this, and I did this, and I started to put these on my sock blockers, but they were already too big before he wore them, <laughs> and now they don't even, they won't hold up at all. Uh, anyway, so these are the socks. He loves them, which makes me very happy. And it's going to lead to him getting more hand knit socks. Um, the next thing I finished was uh, I was on Instagram one night, and Kim uh, Kimmery's Knit Knacks had tagged me in this little crocheted narwhal. And as you probably know if you've watched before, I'm not a big crocheter, although I've crocheted more and more. But never fear, it's always going to be knitting as my number one. For one thing, crocheting kind of hurts my hands. And I have to watch every single thing I do when I'm crocheting. And, but anyway, Kim knows how much I love unicorns and narwhals. So this adorable little crochet narwhal is by Vi Lee, V-I-L-E. I'm assuming that's how you say it. I use worsted weight, and um, I think she must have used a lighter weight yarn. I used a, an, a size F 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, and I had a bunch of leftover yarns um, from other projects, and I listed them on the project page instead of doing them here. I think most of these are from my dad's blanket, but not all of them. 
but here's my narwhal. <clears throat> oh, I'm just so happy with the way he came out. His fins probably should have been a little higher up this way. So it looks like he's doing a, a down, downward facing dog. So he's just my little yoga narwhal. <laughs> and his little tail, so cute. And I learned some things. I actually learned some things doing this. And uh, it was a lot of fun to make. So that's my little yoga narwhal. Mm. The good thing is when you stuff crochet, it is stiffer. So you can't overstuff. I'm really bad about just wanting to stuff and stuff and stuff till it kind of stretches out my stitches. And it's not so bad with, uh, with crochet. But and the last thing that I finished was the first cow for, that I started. And this is from my dad's doctor, Dr. Doshi. She's amazing, y'all. She's just great. Um, this is the Ever After Cow by Marie Bushke, B-U-S-C-K-E. And I love this print in the tangerine bu bubblegum colorway. And again, I'm going off what they said are their favorite colors. Um, this is a feather and fan. And I haven't washed this. I'm going to throw all of these in the washer and dryer and let them soften up and get a little bit more floppy. I used size 8 5 millimeter needles. And here's the finished project. I don't think you can really see the differences. But it kind of it's kind of like this fuchsia type. And she said she just likes pinks and roses and really bright colors. And with the tangerine part, which I didn't even notice the name of it till I got it home, it does have a slight orangish tint, but it's more of a pink. It, it really, really is. I know you can't tell. But anyway, I'm really, really happy with this. And I'm, I'm really hoping that everybody is going to be happy with the cows that they get. Um, so those are the three FOs I've had since last time. And I hope to have some more again for next time. Anyway... So let's talk about what's coming up. Uh, for my final countdown, I'm going to show you these two uh, cow patterns that I have that I think I'm going to start next. They're both by Sarah M. Goodwin. Um, <clears throat> let me, sorry, just a second. One of them is called... Y'all, I'm going to have to pull these up. I'm so sorry. One of them is called Falling Foliage, Foliage Cow, and the other is the Towering Trees Cow. By, and um, they were part of, I believe, a three-pattern set. Um, let me look. I should have had these pulled up already. Okay. Um, I believe this was a three pattern set. I'm fixing to find out. And um, I only liked two of them. And it was $12 for th the three patterns. No, I'm sorry, that was four patterns. But there were two that I liked. And I spent $8 on the two, but I didn't see the sense in spending four more dollars if I wasn't going to knit up any of the others. And I can actually see myself doing these again. Okay, so this is the Falling Foliage. And this one is a cowl that has buttonholes and buttons along the edge. And it's got this leaf pattern. I think it's so pretty and I cannot wait to try it out. Here's another one. Let's see, there we go. So see how it's pretty floppy. It looks really nice. And I'll go back in and see what people did to make it bigger. Make sure that it's not too up close to your neck. Um, anyway, I'm super excited about that one. And I'm also excited about the other one in this set, which is called, what did I say? Um, the Towering Trees Cow. I am so sorry, y'all. Huh. No. I thought they were part of a set. This one is, is a part of a set of four, which is another cowl, a hat, and some leg warmers. Well, I'm, I made a mistake. Okay, but these are also, these are still by the same um, designer, Sarah Goodwin. 
I'm very sorry. <laughs> Towering trees. Uh, two of the girls said that their favorite colors were blue and they didn't care what shade. So I'll probably do one a lighter and one a darker. Somebody said their favorite was black, but they said they also like pink and purple. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to find a way to use the three colors or find a yarn that has all three colors in it. Um, and then I cannot remember what the last one is, but I have them all written down. So here's the Towering Trees uh, cowl. And it's a simple design, but it's going to be enough to really keep my interest. And I love trees. And my obsession, my new obsession with Bob Ross makes them even, even bigger, um, even an, an even bigger obsession. Yeah. Ever, ever since I started back podcasting, I seem to just stumble over my words. I'm so sorry. But anyway, so I need to pick out two more patterns and I need to find some that are equally as engaging as, as these ha have been. Um, of course, I'm going to have to knit some Christmas gifts. I know that my niece wants a snow tiger, which I've talked about before. My older nephew wants the giant teddy bear, which I think I've shown y'all. Um, it's from Huge and Huggable Mochi Mochi. Barry and Theo. And it's done on bulky yarn. So this is not going to take very long. And the reason this... He's, he's going to be... Oops. He's going to be 12 in January. But the last time I got to see them at their house... He showed me his old teddy bear, the one I knit him originally, and it was one of the first stuffies I ever knit, and it's awful. And I told him I always hated that teddy bear. And he said, oh, I love it. And I said, well, I'm glad, sweetie, but I just feel so bad because it's so ugly. And he was like, well, then knit me this giant one. And I said, okay. So I need to find out what my younger nephew wants, and um, I'm going to knit them for, for them. Um... I'm going to knit some Christmas ornaments, I hope. I hope I get through with everything in time to do some Christmas ornaments. And I hope to do some uh, Halloween ornaments because I've got my Halloween decorations up. And I have a little Halloween tree. Um, I'll see if I can pull up a picture in a minute and show you. I found a little tree the other day at Ikea that I think I'm going to get. And I'd like to knit. Have all handmade ornaments on that knitted ones maybe some felt ones maybe um needle felting i'm not sure I'll, I'll try but i think that would be so much fun and so satisfying to see that tree I, I mean i already have a bunch of trees that i put up every year five to be exact <laughs> um when i get everything put up in november i'll give you a little tour of it but anyway um so those are the things that i have coming up and I'm super excited. Let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought it wasn't recording. Whew. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I did forget one upcoming project that I hope to get done by Christmas. Since my younger son is so worthy of socks, I have this yarn that this was the very first time I ever saw Stacy of Brazen Stitchery. Her, uh, this was the original, well, actually, I think it's the pretty much the same. No, it's not. This was the original label. And this is Thor of Asgard in the Duet Sock, which is an 80-20. And Thor is my favorite, so that's why I bought this yarn originally, initially. But I haven't knit any socks out of it yet. And I have so much sock yarn. And I think I'm going to knit my son socks out of this. I don't know what pattern yet. Uh, nothing too frou-frou, but I want it to have a little bit of interest. So I'm excited, and I'm not going to tell him these are going to be a complete and total surprise for him. So these are upcoming pretty soon. Um, well, so I got to do a couple of pretty fun things since I last podcasted. One thing is... Oh, two things uh, had to do with going to a yarn yarn gatherings. <laughs> One of them was actually just a mini yarn crawl with three of the girls from my knitting group. And I tried to find all of their names on... Uh, just one second. Okay, sorry. I thought I heard someone knock on the door and my son is expecting friends over. So anyway, 
Okay, so where was I? So I couldn't find the, uh, all the girls' names on Ravelry, so I just, uh, I'm going to tell you, I went with Diane, Katie, and Susan, and we went on a two-store yarn crawl. The first one is very near to us. It's a yarn store boutique. Um, she has some yarn, not a huge selection, but, but, a, but a nice selection, and she has uh, gifts in there like jewelry and, and things like that. Um, we stayed there for a little while, and she has the cutest little dog. Really, really cute little dog. But the big one that we were going to go to that day, sorry about that, uh, is a yarn store in Montgomery, Texas. It's, say, at least an hour or so from here, and it's called The Modern Skein. Uh, she has a podcast. I haven't seen it yet, but anyway, it's a great little shop, and she had a trunk show going on. So Diane of the Suburban Stitcher was there with her yarn, and uh, we got there, and we went in and looked at yarn, and then we went across the street and ate lunch, and I cannot remember the name of the place that we went to. It was really good, though. And uh, then we went back and picked out some yarn and um, uh, hung around and, and knitted and chatted with everybody for a while, and it was a really great day. I, we had so much fun, but I ended up getting some yarn that day from the Modern Skein. Oops. Sorry about the crackly. Um, she had some yarns from people I had never, or, or dyers I had never heard of there. She uses, I think, only indie dyers. So that makes her shop a bit more, uh, oh, I have something I'm not sure if I showed y'all. I'll show you again and if I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So I ended up just getting two skeins, but it was from a dyer I had never heard of before. Forbidden Fibers. Um, I believe, I, I just met her last weekend. She's originally from California, but she and her husband just moved to Tennessee. And she does the most amazing yarns. This one is called Heirloom Pumpkin. And it's 70% uh, superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 10% stellina. I wasn't, I wasn't even going to get any yarn that day because I thought, well, you know, I really don't need to be spending the money. I really wanted to buy more, though, once I got there. But Forbidden Fiber Company is just amazing. She's, very, she's got a different take on things. She has a lot of... A lot of Harry Potter yarns the house colors different ones um, <clears throat> and that's what I saw last weekend and I'll talk about that in a few minutes but um, of course we got to see Diane's beautiful yarns but I also got another thing while I was there <clears throat> I got the new pom-pom quarterly I say new huh <clears throat> and it's the moon issue <clears throat> This is one expensive magazine, but when I saw the patterns that were in it, I really just really, really wanted to get it. So here's a little bit closer up of it. I'm trying to get this without y'all seeing the. It's beautiful. You can see the back here. I think that's just a, like a multicolored, I mean, I'm sorry, like a variegated type um, gold but it almost looks like um, a metallic gold. So I think I would definitely, if I did this or did something with the pattern, I would have to use something with Stellina or Lurex in it. It's beautiful. And my friend Diane knitted it, uh, knit, made it, took the pattern and made it into a scarf. Um, but this, this whole issue is the moon issue. So here's a, a cow. Let me see if I can get a picture, of it, a good picture of it. Called Hypatia. Hypatia. So pretty. That's very subtle color changes in that. Uh, well, I believe that that might be the. Well, you know what I'm not going to say. Anyway, it has to do with the moon. It's very pretty. And there were just several uh, beautiful, beautiful patterns in here. Here's a, 
a cable sweater called Ceridwin by Fiona Alice. Ceridwin? I'm not sure, y'all. I'm sorry. The These names are tough. Um, oh, wait. Anyway, I'll show you here. Not a great picture, but it's beautiful. So I thought at this time it was worth getting Pom Pom Quarterly. The few times that I have gotten it, I usually get the e-version, which is a little bit cheaper. But um, yeah, I'm not sorry I got that one. So that was that day. It was just a great day. It was relaxing. It was nice to spend time with my friends and just get away and do something a little different. And I hope we do something like that again soon. So last weekend, Kim and I were supposed to vend, or Kim was supposed to vend at Fiber Fun in the SIP in Mississippi, uh, Vicksburg. And she's been trying to move. And... Uh, she thought her house would have sold by now, so she d hasn't been dying like she should, so she had to cancel. But she decided she wanted to take a class, and she already had the hotel room reserved, so she asked me if I wanted to go, and I said, sure. <laughs> so we went. We left on Thursday, and we drove up to Vicksburg, and uh, I, uh, I actually met her where her parents are living now and where she's planning to move. So I drove about halfway, and then she drove the rest of the way. Um, and she took her weaving class. We spent the night that night and got up the next morning and went. And so I got to spend a lot of time with Penny and Stacy of Brazen Stitchery. I got to talk to Sherry of Naughty Yarns, N-O-T-I Yarns. And um, I got to talk to uh, the girl that does Forbidden Fibers. And I'm so sorry I've forgotten her name. But I got, I've got some yarns to show you. And uh, so let's get on with it. Now this is going to be a little crinkly. I should have, I should have taken it out of the bag. And I had, when I thought we weren't going to go, I ordered some yarn. So I've got a lot of yarn to show y'all. I usually don't have this much. But that's okay. I guess I'll live with it. <laughs> okay, so let's start with what I got. I already showed you the first one I got from Penny and Stacy of Brazen Stitchery. And that's the yarn that I'm using to knit my uh, Jemima socks out of. And that was the Jelly Belly uh, 8020, uh, which is the bamboo. And the other thing that I bought from them, which I had looked at last time, was uh, <coughs> Purple Rain. And this is two 50-gram skeins that make up two totally different socks. It's such a beautiful yarn. And this is an eight, uh, 7525. And... I can't wait to try it out. Mm, awesome. Okay, let's see here. I dumped it out <clears throat> on the table here, and I need to figure out what to, <laughs> what's what. Okay. So the other other thing, one of the other things I got was called Soft Sock. I mean, I'm sorry, Teeny Button Studio and her Soft Sock base. And this is the Owlry colorway. And I got this because I feel like this might go with another pair of... Um, the sock club that I'm in with Kay Jones. Mm. This is a lovely, lovely yarn. It's got some dark brown speckles down in here, kind of orangey and yellow. But this mint green, and it, look, oh, there's a little bit of pink right there. You see that? And uh, some yellow, creamy yellow. So I'm excited to try this. This was... Uh, this girl is from New Orleans, so <clears throat> I don't think I've ever bought any of her yarn before. There was another girl there from Houston, uh, Bayou City Yarn Company, and uh, I went into her booth and I was looking and I, I saw this Magnolia uh, colorway, and this was a, a show exclusive and this is on her jazz sock base which is 75 percent merino 20 percent nylon and five percent lurex so it's super sparkly and this is beautiful y'all are getting a pretty good look at what the colors really look like here i just thought it was so so pretty i love the greens look at that peacock blue right there just beautiful and then that burgundy whoo man so these are going to make some beautiful, this is going to make some beautiful, beautiful socks. 
and then I bought some more yarn from Forbidden Fibers. Well, honestly, <laughs> the thing is, I had forgotten that it was Forbidden Fiber that I bought at the Modern Skein a few weeks ago. And, um, like I said, she has these amazing Harry Potter colorways. Um, I really could have bought all of them, and I am going to order the rest of the house colorways. The first one I got, um, this is on her pride base, and the colorway is House of Slytherin. And it is a 70, 20, and 10% Stellina. This is not going to be socks. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get... It smells good, too. I'm going to get her Gryffindor, uh, Ravenclaw, and Hufflepuff colorways, and I think I'm going to make a shawl. I don't know what shawl pattern yet, but I just think, I just think that would make a fabulous, fabulous shawl out of all the ha uh, house colorways. And the other colorway I got from her is called... Um, Horcrux, and this is in the Beatitude colorway, I mean base, and this is an 80-20. Isn't it beautiful? She had so many beautiful colors. Um, I can see myself getting some from her every time she's at a show that I'm at, and probably ordering online from her as well. I don't think I've shown you these other colors that I've gotten. At least I hope not. I should have gone back and looked, but um, I'm going to pause you and see. Hang on one sec. Okay, so I thought I turned it back on and started recording, but I didn't, but that's okay. So I don't think I showed you these yarns. Um, <clears throat> I looked back at my notes and I didn't see them, but that doesn't mean that I for didn't forget to write them down. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show you um, The Philosopher's Cow by K.F. Jones. <clears throat> is a, a pattern she published <clears throat> earlier in September. And um, she used 10 20 gram mini skeins. And I looked and looked to try to find something. And I couldn't find just what I was looking for. Hers look came out like this. And she used her own yarns and they're beautiful. Uh, Self-striping wouldn't really work. I even asked her about it. Um, and so I found this pack and this is not Harry Potter themed, but it's by Crystal Crystal Skies Hand Dyed and her Ragdoll Sock Fingering Weight. And this is the Pixie Dust Pack. And I really thought it was a pretty, a pretty pack. However, there are only seven mini skeins in it. So I have some other yarns that I think might possibly work their way into it, but I'm not sure yet. Anyway, this is the pack of yarns. I'm not going to pull them out. And they don't have a specific name with any of them. You can see just how pretty they are. Pink and a blue and a peach and that light green and then this cream color and uh, purple and yellow. So I'm excited about this and I'd like to get this started pretty soon. Um, and while I was at it, I ordered another one, another skein of her yarn. It's actually, I didn't realize it at the time, one of the minis and it's the speckled lavender colorway <clears throat> on her MCN base, Persian MCN. Uh, fingering weight and it's 80% merino 10% cashmere and 10% nylon and here it is look at these amazing colors she's got here the teals and this bright purple which doesn't look very bright here and the hot pinks this is going to make some amazing socks or maybe add it to a shawl I'm not really sure yet but it's there for when I'm ready. That's why it's okay to have a stash. I'll go through uh, uh, my stash sometimes when I want to knit something, and I just happen to have the right thing in there. That's how I did my uh, campsite shawl. I'd had that yarn in my stash for a few years, and it was perfect. The perfect weight, the perfect amount, and it's my favorite shawl that I, I go to it a lot of the time. Um, I bought these, and, and since I didn't think Kim and I were going to get to go to Mississippi for a while, I bought some other yarns as well. I bought two skeins from Lolo Did It, and I went with her Harry Potter colorways. The first one is on her um, plush sock base, and it's a 75 merino, 15% nylon, and 10% 
Tinsel and her Honeydukes colorway. I don't think this one will go in the cow because the colors are so bright. But look at these colors, y'all. Look, so many colors. Even a tangerine. Um, this purple. This mint. These pinks. Look at this pop of like dark blue. Dark blue. So pretty. This green here, this bright green. Um, oh, yeah, I, I can't wait to knit this up. It's so pretty. And then the other one I got is on her uh, Sparkle Sock base. And it's a 75, 20, and 5% Stellina. And this is her Weisengamot. It's a, I know it's a Harry Potter, but I, I don't know how to say it. Um, look at this teal turquoisey and then kind of this dusty pink so so pretty and look there's a little pop of green right there can you see that yeah and a little bit of gold which is always perfect for any harry potter colorway gold here's some more of the gold right here these are so beautiful i also got oh and by the way i forgot to say that these, this yarn from Crystal Skies smells so good. I don't know what she uses. It must be her uh, soak. I'm not really sure, but it is so, so awesome. And um, when I finished my um, Wonder Woman socks, I decided to treat myself to another skein of artistic yarn by Abby, and I bought her gingerbread stripe sock yarn. And this is a 75-25. It's not a sparkle, unfortunately, but it's still an amazing yarn. Um, here's the card that comes with it, and it has the sock. Well, it kind of is reflecting. There, there it is, knitted up, and it's got a gingerbread house behind it, so it kind of doesn't show up super well, but it is really really pretty here's the yarn such pretty colors there's a little bit of a like an aqua and then like a red let's see kind of has a 50s feel to it in my opinion and then the gingerbread color is so pretty and she always or at least the two skeins i've gotten i shouldn't say always this is only my second one she sends a, uh, a stitch marker that goes with the theme and here is my little ginger oops gingerbread stitch marker how cute is he so I may not get these started before Christmas but maybe these can be my Christmas Eve cast on I'm super excited anyway and I got this little pink mini skein for the toe heel and cuff so yeah so much exciting yarn and knitting coming up and I forgot to show you this mini skein that I got from Brazen Stitchery for being one of the first 12. And this was their show exclusive. Uh, I believe it was Walking to New Orleans. I wish now I'd gotten this as well. Beautiful yarn. If they have some left, left over, I'll see if I can get one later. Anyway, so believe it or not, I'm finally to the end of <laughs> my big stack of new yarn. I know it was very... Uh, indulgent but i don't do it very often not that much and i almost forgot to show y'all the bag i got i wasn't going to get a bag because i don't need any more bags but then i saw this halloween bag and i'm so sorry to say that i don't remember who i got this from and it has it's got a lot of room in it and look at the bats got a good bit of room in here plus these pockets, these nice big pockets that are on the front, but under the flap. So they're not, they don't have a Velcro or a snap, but they stay under the flap. And then it's got this adjustable strap. So it's a really nice bag. It's very, it's kind of soft and, and it flops a little bit, but that's okay. That's okay. I do really like this bag. Okay. Um... I was going to show you all this little thing I found on one of those um, life hack videos. And they showed using hair clips to keep your yarn 
from coming undone once you cake it up. Let me see. Did I do it on here? No. Let me see. Well, I'll show you. You just get it all caked up. So here's a, a skein that I have left over. You get it all caked up and you take your end like this and you take one of the clips off the card and then you just slide it in. Let me see if I can do this here. You just slide it in and then close it. And then I didn't do a very good job. I would do better if I had it facing me, but it's really great. And especially with all the cakes of acrylic yarn that I have, not, I mean, I have other yarn, but it's a little easier, like the fingering weight, it's a little easier to keep it from coming undone, but I have all this acrylic and I do tend to cake it up when I use it. So this is going to be great. I have these two cards, but I'll go back for more when I need them. Let's see, what else was I going to talk to you about? I'm going to talk to you about two books quickly, then I'll go into one week. And um, I've gotten two stitch Japanese, sorry, stitch dictionaries. Uh, this one is Japanese Stitches Unraveled by Wendy Bernard. And I showed you my other Wendy Bernard stitch dictionaries a while back. One of them is the Knitting All Around Stitch Dictionary, and the other one is Up Down All Around Stitch Dictionary. And this one is the Japanese Stitches Unraveled to knit top down, bottom up, back and forth, and in the round. Here's the cover. And I might use some of these stitch, some of these uh, stitch patterns to knit the cowls. Uh, not all of the patterns that they show can be knit all four ways. So just so you know, if you order this book, every stitch pattern in here is not going to be able to be knit flat in the round, uh, top down or bottom up. But this would be perfect for like a pair of socks uh, to design a pair of socks. But look at this twists and eyelets. This one is just knit flat, but I, I like, I love cables anyway. There was one that I was going to show you, and I should have marked it, but it's right here. Uh, here's, well, no, I'm going to find this one first. Here it is, spiders. I think this would make really neat Halloween socks. Um, these can be done bottom up flat or bottom up in the round. So this would be great for toe up, which is my preferred method. So here's that the spiders stitch pattern. And then here's this other one, the escalator pattern, which might be a really good one to knit. Uh, one of the, one of the caregivers said her favorite yarn was black with purple and pink. So I think this might be really good for that. Maybe do the, the pearl sections with purp the black, uh, the purple or the pink. I don't know. I'll have to think about that because this one can act, is actually shown in the round. So, um, yeah, I'm going to look into that. Anyway, the other one is a Japanese, sorry, a Japanese stitch, uh, knitting stitch Bible, which is translated by, Ga by Gail Rowan. And there are 260 stitch patterns in here by Hitomi Shida. Um, and there are a lot of cables in here. Let me just see if I can find some of them. Here's some, well, actually, oh yeah, I didn't even notice this. In the back of the book, they have the samples knit up. Um, so you can just look at them. No, that's not true. They're showing other ways to knit them, sorry. Um, I need to find this cable one. Why don't I ever mark the things that I wanna show y'all? There's this one really detailed cable that might, I love cables. Um, you probably have realized that by now, but there are some beautiful, beautiful cable patterns in here. Oh, here it is. Um, look at this. It's not only crossed, but it's a cable on a cable. <gasps> I love that. I just think that's amazing. And, um, let's see, I saw one back here. I love the leaf patterns as well. This one's really pretty as well. Try not to 
show the so there are 260 different patterns in here they even have uh, like here is a way to use one of the patterns in a fingerless glove pattern so they have a few patterns in here as well as the stitch patterns now here's a pair of socks and this is for the cables uh, So you get a lot out of this book, and if you're interested in designing anything, I collect them, and I really do want to design. And when I do sit down to design, I have a bunch of stitch dictionaries already. So this this will be this will be one I might turn to for something like a, a shawl or something. Anyway, um, I was just going to talk a little bit about a few of the things that are going on in my life. Um, we've talked, I've talked to y'all a little bit about my dad. Things are going along really, really well with him. He had uh, his PET scan done a few weeks ago, and then we went back almost two weeks ago for his next treatment, and she said that all of the uh, lymph glands in his chest were completely gone, the, the cancer was gone, and the abdominal area, which was the biggest area, was almost completely gone so she said so we're going to go ahead and do the fourth fifth and sixth treatments which makes me think maybe when uh, she said six treatments in the beginning that was going to be worst case scenario so um, since it was stage four he's got three more treatments we'll do a pet scan a few weeks after that and then by the end of the year he plan they plan to have his port out and fix his hernias that he has so we've got not much longer really to get the rest of it done and um, things are progressing really really well and um, it looks like we're going to be selling our house they're going to be selling their house and they're going to be moving here and moving in with us so i can help out with whatever they need me to do and i'm glad to do it because my parents have been there for me every step of my life and um my husband and my, my sons are great with them moving in so it's going to be it's going to be good um, the next thing I'm going to talk to you about is the dumbest thing that happened to me about a little over a week and a half ago, my dog had gotten hold of a business card and torn it up and I reached over to pick it up off the floor, a business card, nothing heavy. And I felt this pop in my left side and I thought, what in the world did I do? Well, it was sore. And then the next day it was a lot worse. And then the third day, which was the day we went to Mississippi, it was so bad I literally nearly turned around and came back home. I was in tears. And apparently I had done something to the ligaments in my ribs. Don't know what I did. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's still a little discomfort, but it's so much better now. Um, but anyway, just uh, if you do something like that, if you feel a pop in your side, that may be what you've done. Um, oh, and the last thing I was going to talk to y'all about is a few months ago, I got a new uh, Samsung watch. I had had one before and it quit working, but I got another one before we went to Indianapolis. And I use it for lots of things, but for the main, the main reason is to keep track of my steps because I'm really, really trying to get back into the exercise mode. And I am now. I'm fully into it. And my, my younger son showed me on the Samsung Health app that they have this monthly step challenge. You don't have to pay. You don't get anything out of it necessarily, but you've got this challenge to get 200,000 steps in a month. And uh, I'm very competitive. So I think this, this month I did it. Last month I did it. And maybe even the month before. <coughs> I don't know if I started <coughs> Excuse me, in May or June when I'm doing this. But this is the third month in a row, and I actually am at like probably close to 250,000 steps this month. So it's a great motivator, and I'm feel, beginning to feel like I'm losing weight, um, and I'm really enjoying it. I only walk in my house and do Leslie Sansone videos. I don't walk outside because I'm not an outside person, and I don't go to a gym. So I'm really enjoying this, and um, it's helping me get in shape, and my son is... Uh, a good motivator <laughs> anyway I can't think of anything else to talk about this time I have some more books that I want to talk about but I'll save those for next time um, I'll hopefully ha hopefully have 
some more of the cows knitted and some more done on my Jamama socks. Majama. <laughs> anyway. Um, so until next time, knit on.